the day is finally here. I know. All this preparation, DJ. eh? Yeah. Let's, let's step inside because it's going to be a bit nice and nice Husband and, cozy and, and wife, Chris and Marianne, dropped into BBC Radio Shropshire to see presenter Eric Smith on the morning of a very exciting day. And they weren't alone. They brought along Trudy, their new home. We've always had a passion for travel and we've met lots of people that are on these never-ending holidays and they've taken gap years or two years out and it just makes you think, we're a little bit jealous of that with our three weeks holiday. And uh, we lost a couple of friends over the last year or so and we just thought, you know, it, I think it really highlights to you that life is too short and, and it needs to be lived. We've worked hard, we've got this nice house full of stuff and why am I going to work for the next 20 years just to afford to live in the house that I've already bought with all the bills. And I, there has to be more, more to life than just turning up for that nine, five routine day in, day out. And we just, we just took the plunge and thought, let's do it. We decided to do this nutty thing January 2017, but we'd planned to do it maybe in five years time. Mm. And then of course you get the seed in your head and, and you just it. think, yeah. why are we waiting? Life's short, let's and just- It's taken a year on. to empty the house. It really has. Well, it, and it's a little bit disappointing because you, you go and you buy that 4K surround sound TV with all the gadgets and you pay full price for it. And then as you get rid of your stuff, you realise that there is no value to anything you own. I think we're very materialistic and, you know, as a, you know, yeah. as a country or whatever and as a and planet, as a planet and you, you 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 see things on ebay and you think well this you know this cost yeah, me I a fortune it. and you look on ebay and there's so many people mm -hmm. selling them and you realize you know that it's not anything special anymore no. it's you know it's just an, another bit of stuff we don't miss anything really we've, anything. yeah we well we've got rid of literally everything even yeah. the, the car went last week so it's just the van now yeah I mean, on the last few days we were in the house, we were laughing because I was eating my breakfast out of a measuring jug because yeah. it was the last thing. <laughs> it, was the, 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 it was the only thing I had to eat out of. OK, let's, let's look at this now. We are in... Trudy. ...a very compact <laughs> camper van. Yeah, she's no. actually just under uh, six metres and uh, she's 2.52 metres tall. I know that because when Chris was filming me, we went under a bridge and I had to flinch because I didn't know how we tall it was. We closed our eyes because we didn't know how tall the van but was. But fortunately... <laughs> and, and I'll tell you, you, you duck in your seat, don't you? You did. Yeah, you duck, don't did. you? You can't help it. We did a lot of research, but I had a fair idea of what I wanted because I'd done lots of camping and camper vanning with my family. The bed is a fixed bed at the back, which accommodates a six foot three man. It does, yeah. I'm six foot three, and this is one of the only vans that I could actually lie flat in. And I don't know why. All the salesmen say to you, yeah, but how often do you actually lie flat in your bed? And maybe you don't, but it's nice to have the option if you want to. <laughs> but it's very compact, isn't it? it is. I mean, very, it, no, hang on. Come, you see, that's an estate agent's bijou. Bijou it's is bijou an, a, a, you know, it's small. I think, I think when, we, when we went through the process, we, we went from, okay, so you've gone from a nice five bedroom house and you think, okay, let's find the biggest motorhome we could find because you try and replicate your house. And then we were like, this is insane. We won't be able to park it. We won't be able to drive it down small lanes. Then we went all the way to the other saying, why don't we just go in a car with a tent? And then we ended up, we ended up in the middle no, ground needed, with this. I needed a front door. But it is Bijou. It is. And well, it, a five bedroom house it is. It is. And, yeah. and on the subject of the house, um, when we say we've sold everything, we've actually we've rented that, we've rented we've that rented, out because yeah. we don't get pensions until I've got another 17 years, Chris has got another 20 years. And also we've, we've both worked incredibly hard to have this property so that when we go to the other side, um, our family have something to show that we've worked hard. We, we don't want to sell that. We want to use it. But it gives, as it an gives, income? Well, it gives a regular yeah. income, you know, because if you sell it, your assets start going down mm. if you spend it, if you need the money. So. And we're not careless or frivolous. We're, we've planned it. We're going to try and make it as sustainable as possible. Um, if we run out of money, we'll do a bit of volunteering on a farm, do a bit of fruit picking, maybe work behind a bar or something. So we're going to sustain ourselves and uh, we're not irresponsible and we've blown it all away. We've tried to do it in a sustainable, responsible way. I think a lot of travellers um, that we've met are sort of young, younger guys that have taken a year out or they've saved yeah. up and they're doing a working holiday in Australia or, or something like that. As a middle-aged person, I'm 47, and you think there's not that many of our generation that I haven't, I haven't actually met anybody that's had a nice big house full of stuff that's got rid of all of it. And planning to do it indefinitely. And this is it. Everything we own is mm. in this you know, We talk all the time at home about downsizing. Mm. 
And we never get it. We never do it. No. But you can do it if you really put your mind to it. But you have to want to. If you've if you've built this beautiful home that you love and you've brought your children up in it and you have all those memories and it's it's a very emotional thing, a, a property. We're focusing now on life's yeah. experiences and meeting people around the world. We have had thousands, literally thousands of offers oh, of... Yeah. Come and stay with us. You can park on our van. We want to take you to Disneyland for the day. You guys look like so much because we've got the YouTube channel. So they people are watching us on YouTube and they're saying you guys are so much fun. And we love people. People yeah. are lovely. Yeah. Yes, there are so yeah. many negative stories and doom and gloom and these terrible things and the politicians are doing this, that and the other. Honestly, I have no time for it because generally 99.999 recurring Everybody is lovely. We meet the most interesting people, don't we? Yeah. For Chris and Marianne, this adventure will just keep growing. Before they'd even set off, they were devising a plan to step foot in every country in the world. Every? Every. 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 Not necessarily in Trudy. Um, everyone's like, how are you going to get Trudy to the Galapagos? And I'm like, well, maybe that's not possible. And then a lot of people have sort of said, but there's so many countries in the world with such problems. How are you going to go to every country? And because this is a long-term plan, we're not taking a year out. We're doing this for the next 20 to 30 years, and unless our health determines otherwise. So this is a life's decision. This isn't a holiday. This conversation with Eric happened back in May. I wish you well. Well, bon voyage and all the cliched phrases. Following the morning radio interview, the couple had a big celebration with friends and family, and even had Trudy blessed by a local vicar. God bless Trudy, Marianne and Chris, and everybody that they meet. May they bring joy and healing and happiness to everybody they come in touch with on their journey. Yay! And then they were off. First travelling around Ireland and Northern Ireland before popping back to the UK. Hello? Hello. And then on to Hello. mainland Europe. There we, go. That worked this time. I don't know. we did France, Belgium, the Netherlands, Germany, back into France, then down into Andorra, Spain, Portugal. We're in the south of France at the moment and we're just promptly driving back up the west side of France, mm. slowly pulling out jumpers and long johns from our suitcases that are stored under the bed because, uh, yeah, we can actually see our breath now. Does it seem a long time ago that you weren't living in Trudy and you were in an actual house? It does. It's, it's yeah. gone really quickly, but it's, it's a bit of a distant memory now. Yeah, we, we thought we might be a little bit claustrophobic in the van and after a couple of months need space. But she's sort of become like a comfort blanket. She's very cosy and you feel incredibly wrapped up in love. It's it's funny to say, but when you're moving around regularly and every day you wake up laughing, saying, <laughs> we live in a van, can you remember where we parked? We don't have any anxiety that comes with that because we know that we have our own kitchen, our own bathroom, mm. our clothes. It's a bed on wheels. It literally is yeah. having like a hotel bedroom with a lovely ensuite, but on wheels and you can change your view if you don't like it and you can stay longer if you love it. So yeah, we're loving it. As expected, it's not just been about the places and the food. It's also been about the people. And it seems it's particularly easy to start a conversation when your portable home is covered in branding, letting people know what you're up to. Oh, we've been to people's houses for dinner. We've had people take us out on their boats. People take us out for drinks. It's just been just a constant social interaction. It's, yeah, the, the branding has definitely given us a different experience than if we were in a plain van. We've actually made lifelong friends as well. You know, we've met just fabulous people, phenomenally kind people that are just so open and honest and inspired and curious. It's it's just so lovely to be in a position as well to help people fill their dreams as well and, and encourage people to follow their dream, whatever it is. We're not advocating to anybody to sell their belongings. <laughs> there are so many beautiful places in the world. People have said, oh, yes, but you'll find somewhere really lovely and you'll want to buy a house. Nope. No. We'll go back and visit it, definitely. But we are 
so full of adventure in our hearts and souls that we just want to experience as much of the world as we can. And their plans to travel the world are really coming along. We're going to convert a 4x4 car and we're going to try and drive it around the world. So the plan is that we're going to do 20 countries within 20 months, starting in 2020. To go from a six metre van all the way down to a car is going to be absolutely exciting and phenomenal. And we're very lucky actually because we get on incredibly well. We've been together 23 years and we don't bicker or argue, which I think is probably when people say, uh, what's the thing that you need the most? I say a sense of humour and a great amount of love for each other. You can follow Chris and Marianne's ongoing adventures on social media. Just search Tread the Globe on YouTube, Facebook or Twitter.